Introducing the boxers. And firstly, coming out of the blue corner, he wears the black trunks trimmed with green. Weighed in at nine stone and nine pound and brings to the ring a 32 fight professional record consisting of 25 wins and seven losses. He comes to the ring as the challenger for the title of the night. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Dublin's very own Ocean, the Gale Force Fagan! And standing across the ring in the red corner, the champion. He comes from Cavan, weighing in at nine stone, eight pound and six ounces, and wears the blue and white trunks. As a professional, he is undefeated. A perfect record of 17 wins from 17 contests. Comes to the ring tonight as the EU lightweight champion and the reigning and defending lightweight champion of Ireland, presenting... Shin has been maybe looked to me a little over nervous since he came into the ring. He's been pacing around like you see an animal in a zoo in his cage, pacing around, pacing around. Whether that's just a ploy or not, I don't know. Whereas Murray coming out of the red corner looked calm as he always does. When you watch Murray, he throws very few inaccurate punches in the fight. And that goes right back to his amateur days. No question, no question. The jab, the cross, the jab, the cross, he can throw little clusters as well. Always very good in correctness. He's a crouching style of Fagan. That would be non-stop. He doesn't need invitations to come forward. That's his whole life in this game since he started late. Went away to America on a scholarship for football. That's soccer, Americans. And he has an injury that might have happened in a soccer match. It happened against Amir Khan when he broke his leg. In fact, just above the left ankle. And there's a plate or a bolt in it at the moment. It's a real football injury, like somebody goes over the top and attacks But here he is, the ex-footballer, now a boxer, and up against the very correct-looking Andy Murray. This is good off to a tremendous pace, says fight. I think both fighters here are wanting to impress tonight. And boy, have they come out all guns firing. The like, Oshie's coming forward. You don't have to look for Oshie Fagan. He's there right in front of you. So Andy Murray doesn't have to do much bar. Keep this man. Like, he wants to keep using his jab here on him. He's got a good, strong left jab. He doesn't want to get involved like now, because if he gets in too close, he gets caught with those overhand rights. He's going to have to stay away and use that big, long route that he has. There's no point in being tall and having longer arms than your opponent if you're not going to take, use that to your, to your advantage. The only thing about it, Dave, is that as he, when he tries to make a bit of space, Oshin Fagan closes it up almost immediately, but Fagan, as you see, no, he doesn't have reverse gear on his motor. Very good first round, it was all action, absolutely all action. Talking about injuries earlier on there to Oshin Fagan, Andy Murray, as you know, had a broken uh, collarbone, and that uh, put him out for a few months, and he's on, this is only a second fight back. He said there was no... Residual problems with his what last fight out, which was against Alex uh, Bone, and uh, he's full of this tonight. That's a good left hand, good jab there, Murray, strong jab. This is what you have to do, Jimmy. I've talked to Andy Murray before, I, and I've, I've said to him about his punching. So sometimes you do your punches with just the weight of your arm, but so you have to drive it right through the back of their head. That's what you aim for. And now he's beginning to do that. And you can see right now the punches that he's landing tonight are having a far more effect and a far greater effect than they've ever had before because he's punching with a bit more weight behind him. He's getting that waist movement going properly. But Murray has Murray has his measure right now, Jimmy, because Murray, like, his punches are, are having far more effect. Well, he has him at long range, he has been exactly where he wants him now, and, and what Murray's doing here is pitching book stuff. You know, one, twos, and he gets in a wee bit closer, then he drops that left hand to the body, or the right hand to the body. Good stuff from Murray. He's a classic fighter, Yeah, really, yes, but Austin has to try and knock him out of his stride. In order to try and upset Murray, he has to bulldoze in and let the punches go from every angle, from round the corner, over the top, everywhere he needs to, to let them go for. Because if he doesn't do that, Murray will box the head off. That left jab of Murray's is the one that's seeking out and finding the target. And then he's throwing the right hand in. And then the Fagan, as typical of the man, comes fighting back. A couple of roundhouse rights and lefts. 
As I said at the opening there, there's certainly more hoops and swings attached to Fagan than there are straight punches. Whereas if you look at the straight guy, it's certainly Murray. But a good Irish lightweight championship fight this one is. For Roisin Fagan, this is one of the steps that he has to take if he's going to remain a viable profession. I think what Oshie Fagan has to do here, Jimmy, is, is, is to throw away plan A and plan B and just go all out because he's, he's been outboxed, he's been outpunched. So what he has to do to have a chance you know, of, of, of winning this title, he's just going to have to throw caution to the wind and let them go from every angle and just hope and pray that they land and that they do damage. And away we go for the next round. Round four. A good left hand there by Fagan. Murray is, always seems to be cool inside and outside the ring. He may be burning inside and not showing it. But he boxes as a cool customer. Dear boy, I've seen a lot of fighters, amateurs and pros. Murray has a very high rate of punching accuracy, hasn't it? He does, there's no doubt about it. That jab is very, very, very accurate. It's never out of voicing Fagan's in space. But his right hand and his hooks to the body, you can see every point that he's throwing here. They're, 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 they're breaking Oshin Fagan's defences down here. But like Murray is a stronger fighter here, Jimmy. He's tougher, you know, he, he, he's, uh, he's more powerful. You can just tell, and his punches, uh, punches are having a far greater effect on Fagan than what Ocean Fagan's punches are having on Andy Murray. The only thing is, they're going to have to worry about these two guys. They're fighting at a terribly fast pace here. They want to maybe slow it down a notch because there's a lot more rounds to go, and we're only hoping that they're still firing the same shots. You know, later on in these rounds, that's what they are now, because if they're not, or if one of them's not, that one's in big trouble. Fagan loves a fight, though. He did that against uh, Eddie Highland at the basketball arena in Tala. That was a great fight. And he's doing it again, and he'll always do it. If you're looking for 100%, whatever he's getting for pay night tonight, he's certainly earned it, and he's no shortcuts with him. He won't be calling in sick, that's for certain. Murray, as always, just cool, calm, lovely, orthodox boxer. A coach's dream, really. 17 fights, 17 wins, eight of them inside the distance. And over his professional career, Andrew Murray has averaged five runs per fight. It's very good statistic indeed. And this is round four, so remember that stat as we come up to the next round, if we do. There's one thing you have to say about Oshin Fagan, uh, Jimmy, he's, he's very courageous, he's very brave, and he's, he, he's taking everything there that, uh, that Andy Murray's doing, at it, and, and he's coming back, he's trying his best, but he's been outgunned here, you know, he's been outfired, Murray has all the advantages, the height, the reach and the power, you know, you can't ask for any more than that, and his, and his boxing skills are superior, so therefore, you know, in my mind, uh, uh, Andy here, uh, is, it's not a breeze for him, but uh, I know uh, it's not nice, but uh, Ocean's doing his best, he's trying his hardest, but I think he's just up against a brick wall here, you know, I think no matter what he does, it's not having any great effect on Andy Murray. I don't think Ocean has the power to upset Andy, or I don't, he doesn't have the skills to beat Andy. Some exhibition stuff there for Murray, not showboating, mind you. Exhibition stuff is the end of round four, and Andrew Murray comes back to his corner. He must be happy inside, he'll know himself. Fighters know themselves, just like footballers do. You know when you're playing well. It's nice to be told, too, yes. but you also know yourself. Yeah, the motion keeps coming forward, he's got the heart of a lion, but he, he's on the receiving end at all times, and that jab, those uppercuts and those hooks, you know, and you can see the power that Murray has in the part of the ocean. You know, it's really, it's been becoming really difficult for Oshin right now. Great fella, and two good friends. There'll be nothing underhand about this, but they know low punches, certainly by design anyway. Murray would be ahead at this juncture. This is round five, which, as I told you earlier on, is the average number of rounds that Andrew Murray has boxed in his professional career. Fair fight. It's a nearly 50% rate to 
stoppages inside the distance, says Murray. After that James Gorman victory in 2007, he then beat Peter McDonough in July of 2008. That was a TKO and three. So one of them went four rounds, one of them went three rounds. This one has now gone into the fifth round. And as you know from Oshin Fagan, he's not for lying down. If he goes down and stays down, he must be hurt. But that really wouldn't be in Andrew Murray's plans. What his plan would be is to box well, box as he was taught to box, and shoot her to box. And if he keeps on doing that, he'll be piling up the points. That's a lovely left hand again, and again. Oh, three in a row there. Yeah, well, Oshin Fagan's right eye is beginning to sort of close slightly. I think you can maybe see it. There, there, there's a, what you call a wee mouse on the bottom of, of, of the right eye. Well, and that just is, is, is uh, Andy Murray's accuracy and the punches that, that he's throwing. Nearly every one of his throws lands on target. And Murray's the trap. And that hand left hand is the cheese, and it's really coming right at Oshin Fagan's face. And Oshie now is looking for some sort of inspiration to come swinging at Murray. He's got to pull out all the stops now, Fagan, because he's starting to go further and further behind in this. Just throw caution to the wind, almost. Right now, Jim, it's becoming a, a one-horse a, a one race here because like, Murray, uh, he, he's, uh, he's more powerful, he's stronger, he's a better boxing technique, you know, he's doing a lot more damage now. Like, like, oh, she's, uh, he's stopping some uh, punishment here. Right? No, he's very, very, very brave. He's too brave for his own good. As Darren Maloney said in the introduction to tonight's live transmission from the National Stadium, that he had to live kind of in the shadow of the Macklins, the Lees and the Bernard Dunns, of course, and the John Duddies. But he's been waiting in the wings, and he knows every line of the big show, and he's ready to come in. And I think the referee has seen enough, and poor old Oshin Fagan. I really do feel sorry for Oshin, because he's a great guy. He truly is a great fella. He's broken-hearted. Well, you, can, all over. you can see why, Jimmy. Mean, he was taking an awful lot of punishment. He was. Uh, he was hitting back, but he wasn't doing any damage. You know, he, it was like Oshie hitting a brick wall. You know, he, he was, wasn't make, making a dent in it, but Murray was turning away, and he just broke him down. And every point that he was hitting uh, Oshie with, Oshie was feeling, he was travelling right down to his boots. So I'm sort of glad that the referee did stop the fight because it was going to be the same way the whole way through. It's amazing, I just said it. The average five run. Yeah. Where does it finish? In the fifth round. Murray, look at him. Unmarked, unflurried. Unfussed, beautiful stylus, he's the perfect boxer. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes and 45 seconds of round five, the referee David Erdin has stopped the contest in the interest of Oshin Fagan's own safety, leaving the winner and still lightweight champion of Ireland, Andy Murray. Congratulations. Are you surprised that it ended so early? No, it was, it was, a, it was a good battle up to the, the fifth round, but I knew I was taking charge from maybe just say the second round on, I was taking control of the field. But, you know, I might say it was a bit early, but you know, I, I was landing on some clean shots, but I think kept coming, but, you know, as I said, for his own safety, to say, but I was happy to get the, the inside the win, or the inside the distance win. This was a significant uh, fight for you tonight, obviously topping the bill here. What are your own ambitions? Do you want to have a crack at the European champion, Anthony Mozart? Well, it's one step closer now. You know, this is a potential banana skin, as you can see, you know, defending the Irish title and such a high ranking I had. Such a high ranking in the European uh, ratings. So there was a possibility of Sushi to beat me, he would nick it. But that was, uh, it was more the incentive for me to win. So I'm just delighted to get the victory. How about that uh, broken collarbone? This is your second fight. Any effects? You tell me, what, uh, what was it like tonight? It was fine. Perfect. 